libertarianism might be irrelevant. That's not just a clickbaity title for this. No, and I, I've gotten into this subject before from different angles, but it's really only with a few recent realizations of my own that I have come to recognize the insignificance of politics, uh, even of political activism, in that innovation, technology, is much more relevant to social organization than any political movement, certainly the libertarian movement, could ever hope to be. And I've often talked about all the things that, that are rendering government obsolete, kind of in the abstract, but recently it, it, there was two technologies in particular that jumped out at me as, yeah, this is going to take us to the next level. In fact, this is going to so fundamentally change things that libertarianism might literally become irrelevant, a waste of, of air even. Because these two technologies, and, and maybe you can see where I'm going with this, maybe you can guess them already, maybe you know what I'm thinking. These two technologies are going to pull the rug out from underneath the government racket in such a huge way that it will not be able to help but be fundamentally transformed. And those two technologies are self-driving cars and Bitcoin, or cryptocurrency, if you would like to be more inclusive, of course. Self-driving cars. Now, this one, I hadn't really fully considered the relevance of until rather recently, including uh, a particularly destructive traffic stop that I experienced myself here. So much of the drug war happens through traffic stops that when you have self-driving cars and that part of the government racket goes away, the police state must be fundamentally transformed because such a huge portion of their racket goes away. The entire DUI racket, gone. Most of the drug war, because it's not happening with stop and frisk, it's happening when people get pulled over and their car smells like weed or they pull them out and get searched. It's not, you know, a huge drug bust, so that happens, but it's often from informants setting up their suppliers. You're not going to have just all of the traffic regulation, citations, all of that enforcement, all of that that so fundamentally funds the, the police state gone. And so in order to keep your job as an officer or for an agency like a county sheriff's office to, to maintain its funding, it's going to have to provide legitimate services that actually meet people's needs. It's going to be reduced to that. And that fundamental transformation is going to be so huge, but just ending the drug war. And I think that's happening anyway. And, and, and maybe that's a product of the, the bigger technology here of the internet that makes all this possible. But in Colorado, there is a serious movement to legalize psychedelic mushrooms. We see ourselves now, I mean, even just a couple of years ago, I used to joke that we are at the, the end of the beginning of the end of the war on drugs and what a beautiful thing to celebrate. We might be, you know, at the beginning of the middle of the end of the war on drugs, where marijuana is passe. And you can predict as, and, and count the election cycles until it's fully legalized. You see now, Senator Schumer, and I, I, I so, and, and hey, I know hate is a strong word. I hate this about politics, that we have come to the point where we're not going to let government make marijuana illegal. And statist Senator Chuck Schumer of New York, of all people, looks like he might be the one to take credit for that. Holy crap! But with self-driving cars, most of that just becomes irrelevant anyway. And all of the, you know, all of the, the scams associated with the war on drugs, all the profiteers in the tobacco industry, the alcohol industry, the pharmaceutical industry, the paper industry, all of these interests are fundamentally transformed by the drug war ending and self-driving cars. 
And then you look at Bitcoin. Bitcoin is just just the obvious one, right? It, 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 does, it almost doesn't require explanation, although maybe that's too much assuming that uh, everybody is as nerdy a politico as I am, especially about monetary policy and things like that. And I'm, I'm not really someone who keeps up with it, but I think that having studied it, you know, read Ron Paul's and the Fed, having taken the time to wrap your head around uh, monetary policy, I think that that gives you an appreciation that most people don't have. But for those of you that don't geek out on stuff like that, no, you under, you should still very relatively easily be able to understand that with Bitcoin, with cryptocurrency displacing fiat currencies all over the world, a huge chunk of the government racket just goes away. The ability to create money out of thin air through fractional reserve banking, through lending through the Federal Reserve System, through just printing more money, or now as it is obviously creating it digitally. That's how they steal from all of us en masse. That goes away. And both of these technologies, the reason I, I highlight these two in particular is that we see them coming with full implementation just right around the corner. They're already testing self-driving cars. I mean, we already have the technology for that. It's just a matter of implementing it and really getting government regulation out of the way so that it can be implemented faster and safer. It's happening. It's really just a matter of time before self-driving cars are the dominant mode of transportation. And then Bitcoin. We could be one killer app away. It could be one institutional service, one literally app that has the features of the bank and all the things that people expect from the US dollar on top of all the advantages of cryptocurrency and boom, it's done. And it could be not overnight, but historically speaking, yes, blink of an eye, a few months time where suddenly people go, yeah, we're not, we're not doing this government money thing anymore. We're going to do cryptocurrency. We're going to do Bitcoin. That's it. We're done. So technology, is much more relevant as a driver of social structure than politics. And you can take this back historically. I wouldn't be talking about this as some phenomenon isolated now that we see right now beautifully unfolding before our eyes if there wasn't an historical trend that it represented the continuation of. You look at humanity's progress with agriculture, transitioning from hunting and gathering to massive specialization of labor with freeing up of, of hours being able to spend pursuing things other than hunting and gathering. The internet, fundamentally just connecting humanity, making the whole wealth of, of human knowledge and information available at, at our fingertips. It just th these technologies are so much more relevant than the political ideas sort of superimposed upon them. But there's something else about right now in, in the timeliness of these observations and the scale of this. And, and I, I, I talk about this in, in my book, Freedom, as, as the asymptote, the idea of, of humanity's exponential experience eventually getting so fast, accelerating so rapidly that puny human brains can't even keep up with that shifting reality. But there was something that, that sort of drove it home for me trying to explain this to someone else recently as a matter of scale. And, and you can look back, just look back at our experience of the last, I don't know, you want to say 20 years or so with the internet. Look at how much the world has changed over the last 20 years. And I think, and I say 20 because, you know, it's easier to do 10, but 20 is sort of this, you, get, you know, phase of uh, adoption of the internet. We can kind of look at as a rough period and say, wow, yeah, humanity. The, the human experience has been fundamentally shifted in the last 20 years. And that's really equivalent to the change that we've experienced over the last 200 years, which is equivalent to the change that was experienced over the last 2,000 years. You see where I'm going with this? Because you can go back and you go, well, you know, Adam might be really off on, on the numbers and the exact scale, but he's right about the basic concept here. And it's one of those things, it's, it's, it's totally subjective. How do you quantify, you know, how do you measure this human progress, acceleration of the human experience, right? There are certain things you can measure, you know, quality of life, generally, uh, productivity per man hour, that kind of thing. But 
the acceleration of the human experience as a whole is clearly an exponential one. And I think that 2200, 2000 year timeline kind of goes, yeah, yeah, that's you look at 2000 and it's the 20,000 years prior to that. And the 200,000 years prior to that for like the all of human experience. And it makes you think about the universality of the, the biological nature that if life is developing on another planet, perhaps right now, that at some point it's going to achieve intelligence on the same scale of being able to control and manipulate technology with opposing thumbs and posable thumbs, things like that. But if those numbers are even roughly true, that means that the change that we've experienced over the last 20 years, we are about to experience in the next two years. And then something like three or four months, and then something like a couple of weeks, and then something like a, a day. And, and it, it, you know, it's like, uh, my friends Kenny Palarantano and Sterling Luan did a video recently. There's too much good news to keep up with. It's true. The innovation, science, technology, that's what's, that's what's accelerating. And, and you can't even keep up with it. And if you imagine, if, if, if you know, 20, you know, for a lot of the, the, the history of the libertarian movement, a, a big part of the libertarian message depended on Things are bad, we're going to make it better. We're going to relieve the pain. We're going to alleviate the suffering. We're going to stop the wars. We're going to end the ripoff the, uh, of, of that, that is taxation, because taxation is theft. We are going to stop the police state. We're going to stop the surveillance state. Now, those, the surveillance state is, is still accelerated. But the rest of those things, fundamentally, the quality of life in the United States, anyway, is great. It's so good, humans don't know how to handle it. You're not, we're not going to win. As libertarians politically going, you know, things are terrible and it's with that doom and gloom shit. No. It's going to be like, hey, you know, the sooner we get rid of this thing, the better off we'll be, the happier we'll be. But it's happening anyway, so who really cares? And if you think about just how much harder it is to sell libertarianism when it's not, when it's just like, hey, yeah, things could be better, like, if we just, if we did it this way. Like, a lot better. Like, hugely better, obviously. So much less suffering. But... If these two technologies come and say reduce government by 90% relevance in your life as an individual, do you even care anymore, even as a libertarian? As someone who sees the injustice of the existence of a coercive monopoly called government? Like, yeah, we might be irrelevant. It might be that in the scope of human history, they look back and go, oh yeah, the libertarians were the ones who kind of saw that coming, but were looking at it through this funny political lens instead of the technology and, and science and progress and innovation and entrepreneurship lens that is so much more relevant. So, either way, the state as we know it is not going to be around for very long. And I look forward to the day when we can say that libertarianism is irrelevant. Sure. Thank you to YouTube for hosting this video and for being an essential part of human progress by making video hosting available worldwide to everyone on the internet. However, the next phase in human progress is here with Steemit.com and their video hosting alternative blockchain-based solutions, including DTube, and you can find that through Steemit.com as well as my own page there, at Adam Kokesh. This is a decentralized blockchain-based social media network that pays you fairly for your content. Already, I'm regularly making more there with a single post than I do from an entire month on YouTube. So please join us on the next frontier of the information revolution at steamit.com. And if you want help getting a leg up there, I'm happy to re-steam your posts and make sure that no one is starting from scratch. Just email me one of your favorite posts at adam at and we'll share it on my feed.